We're going to talk about a newer muscular disease called myasthenia gravis. It can be quite confusing, but we have to understand our patho, and when we understand our patho, then we can more easily understand what's going on and what the treatment options will do for us. So let's take a look at it. So myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease. When you say autoimmune, that means the body is attacking itself. So we're gonna have antibodies here having a play at it, okay? So we have severe weakness of one or more skeletal muscle groups, so the muscles. So we have maybe my arm and my leg are not quite working, you know, so it's not necessarily bilaterally, it's just random places in the body where the muscles aren't working, okay? So what is wrong? So here's what's happening. It's a problem with antibodies attacking the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle fibers. So our muscle fibers are there, and that's what this pink is, the muscle fibers. And they like, they need acetylcholine come into the fiber and tells the muscle to contract. Okay, so if we have antibodies that are blocking the muscle fibers and it prevents the acetylcholine from getting into the muscle fiber, that means the muscle can't contract. So let's look at what it's supposed to be. So we have acetylcholine here at the end of the neuron. The nerve tells our body's parts what to do. So we have the end of the neuron has acetylcholine in here. A little like sparkles, like glitter, glitter. It's gonna make me excited, make my muscles contract. So we have our acetylcholine, it's gonna come out of the neuron and it's gonna go into the muscle fibers here. So these are the acetylcholine receptors. So they're waiting for the acetylcholine to arrive. So the acetylcholine can easily go into the muscle fibers through the acetylcholine receptors, okay? Then that causes the muscle to contract. So that's how it's supposed to be. So when we have antibodies in myasthenia gravis, the antibodies are attacking the muscle fiber acetylcholine receptors. And that's what these blue things are, the receptors. The green here is the antibody, it blocks them. So the antibodies block them and it degrades, it starts to degrade the uh, receptors. That prevents acetylcholine from getting into the muscle fiber and therefore the muscle will not contract. So it is very flaccid or paralysis-like muscles. Make sure you understand the acetylcholine role here it plays an important part when we give medications, we can test it, and it will help us figure out what's going on. Let's say the patient comes in with some weakness and we need to figure out if this is what they have. The first thing they're probably gonna do is the Tenslin test. It's so easy to perform and it produces immediate results. So it is an IV medication, a drophonium, and we usually call it tensilin. So we call it the tensilin test, but you do need to remember the E word, the, the adrophonium, okay? And we give it IV. So as soon as it's given IV, the patient has immediate muscle strength again. It only takes a few seconds for them to get their muscle strength again. They'll have them do a few tests, then after about five minutes, it wears off and they're back to how they were. So that is a positive test and it pretty much confirms myasthenia gravis. Other things they'll do is an EMG. They'll test the nerve conduction in the muscles. They'll also maybe do a blood titer to see if there's antibodies in the blood. And then one other thing that they'll look for is a chest x-ray looking at the thymus gland. So when you're a baby, your thymus gland is a, a little bit enlarged and it's right here uh, behind your sternum, okay? So as you get older, it gets smaller and almost you can't even see it anymore. But on patients who have mycelium gravis, they found that it's connected with a thymoma. So an enlarged thymus gland. So that's something you need to connect the dots with myasthenia gravis in uh, assessment findings for diagnostic tests. Before we move on, let's look at the drugs that we'll be giving to the patient. 
And I want to review it now so that when we start to talk about uh, complications of the drugs that they'll take, we'll have a better understanding of these words. So I want to point out that there is an enzyme that's called acetylcholinergterase, and it breaks down acetylcholine. So you have the enzyme acetylcholinerase breaks down acetylcholine, which we know acetylcholine makes the muscles contract. But we want to kind of get rid of that enzyme so that the patient has more acetylcholine available to them. The drug is called, this is a drug class or category, anticholinergic. It's also written sometimes, so don't be confused, as a cholinerase inhibitor. So inhibit means to prevent or anti so they just write it two different ways, and I wanna make sure you notice that it means the same thing, it's just written different sometimes. So we don't wanna get ourselves confused, and it can be confusing. So what this drug category does, it increases the amount of acetylcholine available because it stops the degrading of the acetylcholinase enzyme. And also note that it makes everything dry. Dry eyes, constipation, dry mouth. So those are some huge side effects of those anticholinergic drugs. So dry, it makes everything dry. On the opposite end, we have cholinergic. It makes more acetylcholine. Um, what this does, it, it works with the parasympathetic nervous system and it increases secretions, increases saliva, it dilates vessels, it also decreases heart rate, causes bradycardia, um, or lowers your heart rate, and then it also increases digestion, so it can cause muscle cramps and spasms and that kind of stuff. So now, let's move on to signs and symptoms. The patient will have profound muscle weakness. It can be in the extremities, you're gonna definitely see it in their face. So you'll also see ptosis of the eyelid. So that is a droopy eyelid, and you'll just see the eyelid, and the whole like eye area is just really droopy. So their eyes will be like, partially covered or halfway covered. It'll be noticeably droopy. Um, it could be one or both. Uh, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing and chewing for these patients. So we do have little tiny muscles all throughout our face that helps us talk, helps us breathe. So all of our muscles are going to be affected, not all of them in myosin gravis, but they're, they're different pieces. So it just depends on what's being affected. Uh, diplopia, double vision. So they may have some double vision. We do have extraocular eye muscles that helps control our vision. Voice weakness, because our larynx has some muscles there that has to contract and move to help us speak. A mask-like face. So this is describing the person who cannot make facial expressions because the muscles in their face aren't working. So they can't smile, they can't make regular expressions like they would. So their face is just kind of flat and they have it's like a mask is put on their face because their muscles aren't moving to make those facial expressions. They call it mask-like face. Okay, and respiratory distress. So if the, if the um, muscles that help move breathing, your diaphragm or the extra muscles, the accessory muscles, then it may make breathing difficult. Let's look at medical management and nursing care. We're going to treat this disease with an anticholinergic drug, also known as par paridostigamine bromide. Okay, paridostigamine bromide. And this is an anticholinergic drug, and it is given to help block anticholinergic enzyme. This will block the acetylcholinergic enzyme that degrades acetylcholine. So this makes acetylcholine more available to the patient. So this drug, has those anticholinergic side effects, which makes everything dry. And if they get too much of it, it can cause bradycardia and they'll have too much acetylcholine. So what they'll have is atropine, which is the antidote for an anticholinergic drug or pyridostigamine bromide. So atropine is needed 
when these symptoms appear. So if you get any questions that say your patient is experiencing bradycardia, sweating, abdominal pain, then we know that they've, uh, they uh, have too much of this drug and we need to give them the antidote which will correct these side effects. Other drugs that these patients will take are prednisone and prednisone is one of those corticosteroids that helps decrease inflammation. It also suppresses the immune system as well. They will get specific immunosuppressants. Plasmapheresis is done to remove the antibodies out of the system and then we have a thymectomy. So if they do determine that the patient has an enlarged thymus gland, then they'll just take it out. With nursing care, we want to encourage rest because rest gives uh, the the muscles more acetylcholine to function. We want the patient to have rest because it makes them feel better. Okay, so rest for them. Evaluate their swallowing because we do have an aspiration risk and if their swallowing muscles are being affected, we want to know if we need to switch to thickened liquids or have a PT consult or something. Okay, uh, keep their head of the bed up. Again, that's to prevent aspiration. It's also to help them breathe easier. So sitting the head of the bed up helps everyone breathe easier and is an easy intervention that we can do quickly. Give eye drops. So this medication, the medications they'll take call, causes dry eyes. So we will give them some um, eye drops to help lubricate the eyes. Monitor their airway. So if their airway and respiratory muscles are being affected, then we need to make sure that we are watching for deterioration with that area. Now there's two more things that we need to talk about, and that is related to their medication uh, routine and schedule. So they need to take their medication at the same time every day. It's very important that it's routine and that it's taken because if not, then we can have symptoms that start to arise. So there are two different things come up that we need to know these problems, okay? The first one is a myasthenic crisis. So myasthenic crisis is when the patient is not taking enough of their medication or they forgot to take it or they've been omitting, omitting doses or maybe they didn't get their prescription from the pharmacy. So what happens is their condition gets worse. So their myasthenia crisis, so their myasthenia gravis issue, muscle weakness, gets worse and that can lead to respiratory depression and respiratory problems and that's what we're going to be looking out for whenever we have this going on. So they're just not making enough meds. Other things that can cause a myasthenic crisis are infections. So when someone has an autoimmune disease, infections kind of make their autoimmune disease worse. So an infection or high levels of stress can make them not have enough of their medication. An infection can cause their symptoms to be worse. And we call that a myasthenic crisis. Okay, the next one is the opposite, is a cholinergic crisis. With the cholinergic crisis, that means that we have an overdose of medication. So they're taking too much of it, and now we have an overload of acetylcholine in the, in the system, and it produces the side effects of abdominal cramps, muscle rigidity, and maybe even bradycardia. So they've had too much meds and they need atropine, which is the antidote in order to correct what happened.